Hello everyone, it's me, Aaron, Professor Thorgy, your guide to all things geeky, and welcome to another episode of Comic Class, the show every single week on this channel where we just geek out about comic books. And this week, there's something very important in the comic book industry that I need to discuss with you. No. No. No, you see, for the past couple of weeks, months, hell, vast majority of this year, I've been talking almost exclusively about Marvel and DC. Not so much DC, actually, because they've actually been pretty stable. They've been doing well. Rebirth is still working for them, so I've been able to leave them alone to their own devices. Whereas with Marvel, almost every single week, I'm forced to bring out the extinguisher to try and put out whatever grease fire they've started that week. Come on, Marvel, you were doing so well for so long, man. You're like that kid in college who aced all his classes, but then the moment he graduated, he developed a drinking problem and just flushed all his potential right down the drain. I'm not speaking from experience on that one. I mean, I know some guys, but that's beside the point. Listen. I'm done talking about Marvel for now. I don't care whatever crazy thing they have gotten up to this week, I'm not talking about because I need to spotlight some indie books. I have been doing an injustice to all the independent books out there because I have been forced every single week to talk about whatever crazy thing those two companies have gotten up to. So from here on out, at least once a month, I'm going to dedicate one episode of Comic Class to spotlighting some great indie books. Whether it's Image, IDW, Boom, Valiant, or some of the smaller companies out there, there are some amazing independent titles that you can find at your local comic book store right now. So every single month, I'm going to spotlight at least one title that you can go to your store and begin your indie journey on. So for the very first episode of our Indie Spotlight, I'm actually going to spotlight two independent series. And the first one that I'm going to talk about, as I said, is from Image Comics, God Country. This is the story of a man who returns home with his wife and his young daughter to visit his ailing father. His father is suffering from Alzheimer's and is in the late stages of Alzheimer's. He doesn't remember anything. He is lashing out at everyone around him. He is becoming violent in his old age. It is killing his son to have to see his father like this. But as he visits his father, a tornado touches down. But it's not just wind that is destroying their house. There is something else inside the tornado, a giant monster that then begins to attack them. However, there is something else inside the tornado, a giant legendary sword. And not just any legendary sword, it's the God Sword. It is the sword that is the embodiment of all blades. There was a moment where they asked the sword, so were you Excalibur? And it goes, I was everything. Every magical sword you've ever heard of, I was all of them at the same time. I am the embodiment of magical weapons all in one thing. The sword touches down, his alien old father touches it, and suddenly, his father's cured. The Alzheimer's is gone. He remembers everything, and his dad now is wielding this massive giant weapon that he is able to fight this monster off with, and he's been able to rebuild their house like magic. And the greatest thing about this is, it's not that it's some story about an old guy with a giant magical weapon. It's an old guy who is now cured of Alzheimer's. The touching part of this story is him just looking at his granddaughter and realizing he never really got to know his granddaughter. He now remembers every time they came to visit. He now remembers their faces. He remembers his wife and he remembers the pain of having to lose her, but he's glad he has that. He's glad that he got all the good times back and the bad times. And I'm going to go into the next few issues in my description here. So if this sounds interesting to you, maybe skip ahead by a few minutes, but just go ahead and give you guys a little bit of a spoiler of what happens in the next episode, next episode, next issue. This god who used to have that sword touches down on earth and is like, I'm coming with that sword, you gotta give it to me. And they just go, no, let's just talk about this. And he's like, oh, okay, let's just talk about it. That's the amazing thing to me. That's so great. They set up it was gonna be some big battle royale between this old man with the sword and this giant god, but the sword is like, no, no, no. I go where I wanna go. I wanted to go to this old man, and this god was like, oh, well, I guess I respect that. I mean, I respect you, sword. If this is what you choose, I understand. And then this ancient space god just sits down with this simple old guy from the country, and they just talk about this. 
And the old guy just basically says, if I give this back to you, is there some way to cure me of what has happened to me? Is there some other way to cure my Alzheimer's? He's like, I'm sorry, but no, he's like, then I ain't letting this sword go. Because a man deserves to have his memories. A man deserves to not have that taken away from him. And it was touching hearing him talk about this. This is a guy who he is not fighting to save the world. He's not fighting for some giant treasure out there. He is fighting for his memories. The simplest thing that every single one of us deserves to have. It is one of the most touching stories that I have ever heard. But the great thing is, in the next issue after that, when he and his son actually sit down and start talking, you see, it's not like he was necessarily a really great dad. Like, you see, they had problems, and when his dad comes back, and he's really back to being who he was, you see, they kind of disagree on some stuff. His dad doesn't exactly treat him all that right, and it makes him a really complex character. I love that! This guy is one of the most three-dimensional characters that I have seen in any comic this year. And for everybody out there who is thinking to themselves, yeah, well, you know, that sounds nice and touching, but you know, you got a guy who's got the god of all swords there in his hand, and you got other giant space gods out there. Is it just people sitting down and talking the whole time? No, no, no. Issue 3 has come out. Issue 3 features this hell god coming in here and like, okay, Wave after wave of gods are now going to come and try and take this sword from you. We will never ever leave you alone until you are dead and we have that sword back in our hand. And the first one is like an underworld god who then just takes his granddaughter and sends her off to hell. And the old man's like, you gotta stay here. I'm going to get my granddaughter back. And it's like, oh, this is going to be epic. That's what's going to happen in the next issue. I cannot wait to read that issue. The creative team behind this book is the exact same creative team behind Paybacks. I was praising Paybacks for the longest time. I was begging people to read Paybacks. That book was actually in my top 10 best comics of the year last year. And when I made that list, I told you guys, this is me trying to look at these books objectively, not necessarily have it just be my personal opinions. And I told you guys what I meant by that was that my personal favorite comic of last year was not number one, but it was in the top 10. That was my personal favorite comic of the year last year. Paybacks blew me away, and this is the exact same creative team behind that, and it lets me know these guys just work magic together. They've done several other comics before, and they've all been great. This one is being set up to quite possibly be their best comic yet, and I am so glad that people are finally praising it. Because as I said, I kept trying to get people to read Paybacks, and everybody was like, I don't know, I'll check it out eventually. This is the one that people are finally checking out. So it might not have been Paybacks, but still an amazing book from this writer and artist. Next book I'm going to talk about is another one from Image Comics, it is on issue two at the moment. And I really liked issue one, but issue two is the one that cemented, this is going to be something special. This is going to be something that I love. And the book I'm talking about is called Extremity. Now Extremity is a giant space fantasy epic. I don't know how big the scope of it is going to be, but at the end of the last issue, they gave me a hint of what the scope was and it looked pretty damn big. So prepare to be in for a long ride. This looks like it is going to be one of those books like Saga or Why the Last Man, where it's going to be a massive journey where they pick up tons of characters as it goes along. I'm totally down for that because for the longest time, I have been needing something to tell people in my store who like Saga to read next. So, so far this looks like it could be it. However, it's a bit bloodier than Saga was. Yeah, you know how Saga is kind of an examination of love and sex? This is an examination of revenge. Extremity is the story of this colony of people living out in space, and it's a bunch of different civilizations, each belonging to like different groups of people in different houses, and they're at war with each other, and they all kind of live in almost what looks like an asteroid belt. At the end of the very last issue, you actually see a map of where everyone lives and where every single group is stationed, and it's basically just on giant floating chunks of rock. It's not even planets, but every single rock has like different life forms living on it, different ecosystems on it, so every single one of them has a variety to it, which has me really excited to see where they're going to go along this journey, because, yeah, there are some really imaginative places that they showed on that map, and I really want to see these characters go there and find different things there, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyway, it's about this group living out in space. As I said, they're at war with each other, and one day, the invading group comes in 
and basically destroys our protagonist's home. But not just that, our protagonist is a young girl who was an artist. She was the best artist in her clan, and they come up to him and go, we're gonna take everything precious from you. And they just take her arm and rip it off of her. So now it starts off by showing this girl trying to draw again years later, but she's now drawing with her left hand and everything just looks squiggly and horrible. And like, every time that you see her trying to draw, you feel that pain all over again. This is a book that is all about revenge, as I said, and every time that you see what her drawings used to look like, it's like, oh, that's amazing. And then when you see how bad they are now, and her trying and struggling to capture that magic again, it's like, these people need to pay. Every single issue, they make you aware of what they took away from her. And what I love is that this is a story about a family. You've got the father, you've got the daughter, and then she also has her brother there. And every single one of them is kind of approaching this war in different ways. The father is a man on a mission. He's like, no, no, no. They took everything from me. They took our home. They took my daughter's arm. They took her ability to draw. I'm going out there and I'm getting every single one of them. I'm going to make every single one of them pay. The daughter is kind of just starting to get that thirst for blood. She's kind of starting to get to that point where she's like, yeah, this actually is my opportunity to make them pay. At the end of the first issue, we start to see this is it. This is when she starts to get to that point where there's no turning back. It's time for her quest for revenge to start. But the brother is only like, I'm not okay with this. Like, I know we have to make them pay, but I don't have the stomach for it yet. And I can't quite tell if he's eventually going to start going down this darker path for revenge, or if he's going to end up being kind of the heart and soul who's like, no, we must rise above this and be better than this. I really don't know how this story is going to go. As I said, kind of like when I saw that map, it's like, okay, I don't know what location they're going to go to. I don't know where these characters are going to go either because in issue two, after she kind of already started her quest for revenge, she was kind of like, okay, why do you, my brother, not feel that same thirst that I do? But you can tell she's kind of like questioning it herself. So yeah, again, just like with God Country, it's very complex characters. These are characters who are feeling a lot of emotions at the moment. But as I said, they're going to go to a lot of insane, crazy places. In issue two, they go to this place where they just get attacked by giant monsters, but then they find a robot who comes in there to help them. And I'm like, okay, I didn't get a sense that any of that stuff was going to happen in the first issue. And that's what it made me realize Every place that they go to, there's going to be different rules that they have to establish and different characters that they're going to start to meet. There's going to be a huge variety to all the different faces and creatures and characters that we're going to run into. And I love that because I've always kind of had a problem with fantasy series. Simply because so many fantasy series just throw you right into it and it's like, figure it out as you go along, man. I have this world all fit out in my head. Hopefully you guys will be able to figure it out as well. This one though, comes in here and gives you just as much as you need in every issue to start figuring it out in your own head. It gives you everything that you need to kind of go, okay, so that's what this is all about. This is how they interact with that. This is this guy's role. Okay, you can start putting the pieces together. It doesn't hold your hand, it doesn't stop and explain everything, but it doesn't just throw you in the deep end and hope that you can figure out how to swim. So that's the kind of fantasy series that I like. In fact, in a very weird way, when I was reading issue two, and I saw the brother and sister interacting with each other, I don't know why, but for some reason, all I could think of was Sokka and Katara from Avatar The Last Airbender. They're not at all like those characters. I mean, they are on a quest for revenge against this giant invading force. So in a way, yeah, I understand that. However, the roles of these characters are completely different from Sokka and Katara over in Avatar. But what made me realize why I was making that connection is because one of the things I loved about Avatar is that it was this big imaginative world, but they took their time introducing you to everything without holding your hand and without just throwing you in. So again, that's the kind of fantasy stuff I like, where they have that correct pacing for how to introduce you to this world. Extremity does just that. So there you have it, folks. Two books from Image that feature deep, complex characters going on rich emotional journeys and kicking all kinds of ass along the way and being incredibly imaginative and beautifully drawn on every single page. Make sure that you go to your local comic book store and ask to pick up a copy of either of these books right now 
And if they don't have a copy of it, then ask them to order you a copy of it. And if they're not willing to order you a copy of it, then screw them. Buy the book digitally. That's what you get local comic book store for not buying indie books. That's not really the best way for me to end an episode of Comic Class, but screw it. Anywho, thank you guys very much for tuning in to another episode of Comic Class. As I said, I am going to now dedicate at least one episode every single month to spotlight an indie book that I am really digging. But I would like to hear from you guys. Let me know in the comments down below what indie books you're really digging right now. What indie books do you want to see me spotlight on future episodes of this show? And if you want to see any other comic book videos, make sure that you click that subscribe button because we do these every single Wednesday, but we also do videos on the weekend, spotlight movie reviews, video game talk. We cover everything from the world of geekery on this channel. Thanks again for tuning in, everyone. Come back next time. Bye.